How's everybody doing today? I'm here with my baby girl. And what are we making? Meatloaf. We're going to make some meatloaf. So I'm going to flip the camera around, show you what we got laid out. And then we're going to throw together some uh, awesome meatloaf. Meat delicious. Look how cute she is. All right, let's get this going. All right, for today's meatloaf, I have leftover pulled pork from the pulled pork video. Probably about a pound. I have some pork rinds. Chicharrones. And these are just plain. There's nothing in these but pork fat. So that's going to be our bread. I also have some Parmesan cheese, which I like to use. Uh, no cellulose powder. So that's pretty good. We're going to throw that in there as a binder. I've got some Italian seasoning. Mediterranean blend, a couple tablespoons, or not a table, about a tablespoon and a half of that. Uh, I've got two teaspoons of garlic powder, roasted garlic. That's going to be tasting great. And then I have some ground chuck. I have two pounds of ground chuck, 80-20, on sale at Publix. So I got two of them. And so it's going to be beef and pulled pork uh, meatloaf. And I'm also going to make a gravy. I'm going to use beef broth, which I did this in the uh, for Thanksgiving, which worked out great. Beef broth, and believe it or not, half a teaspoon of this glucomannan, just sprinkled in there, and it will thicken this stuff up. And that beef broth becomes gravy in a matter of seconds. The other thing that I don't have pulled out, I forgot to pull it out, was uh, some G. Hughes sugar-free um, ketchup, which is one carb per tablespoon. I'm going to use three tablespoons of the G. Hughes. So I'm going to go ahead and get this started, and we'll show you how it looks. The baby girl here is going to start the process by mashing these pork rinds into little pieces. So I got a little pounder, and she's going to pound these into crumbs. You know, the other ingredient I forgot to mention is I am going to use an egg as a binder just one whole egg and that'll go in there too all right so baby girl's gonna bash away until these look like crumbs and then we're gonna mix everything together so the kids are getting ready here for the mixing part uh, Audrey pounded uh, yeah Owen wants to mix Audrey pounded the pork rinds real good the pulled pork is from where I did uh, I did a pulled pork video and it made so much meat that I wound up just vacuum sealing and freezing several portions because it's too much so now we're going to mix this thing together. You can see Audrey's finely pounded breadcrumbs, which is the pork rinds. I got the pork and the beef in there. And uh, I got everything laid out here. We're going to dump the rest in. I'm going to throw in the garlic powder. I'm going to throw in the uh, Italian seasoning. And then I'm going to dump the rest in here and I'm going to video Owen here mixing it up here in just a second. All right, Owen's gonna start mixing. He's got gloves, he's going hands in. So that is one small bag of pork rinds. That is half a cup of uh, Parmesan cheese, tablespoon and a half of Italian seasoning, uh, three teaspoons of roasted garlic. I didn't put any salt in there because the pork rinds are salty. I also have uh, two pounds of beef, one pound of pulled pork, one egg, three tablespoons of the sugar-free ketchup. Okay. Owen's trying to get keep his sleeves out of the meat. Yeah, it's kind of hard to do with it. But it feels really squishy actually. It makes sense because it's all raw. So it's all raw. We're going to massage the meat until it's all mixed together. And then I'm going to form this on a sheet pan. Bless you, sneezing. The, make sure you sneeze in the meat real good while you're mixing it, because that always makes it taste better. No, it always makes it taste better. It's terrible. Don't <laughs> sneeze in the meat. All right. So we're going to form this up here into a nice uh, mixture, and then we're going to... Audrey trying to help too. Yeah, and we're getting it everywhere, guys. Come on. So this is the joy of kicking with children. And uh, that's what I live for, a little bit of joy. So we're gonna mix it up, we're gonna form it up. I'll show you what it looks like. 
And then I'm going to wrap it up, put it in the refrigerator, and then later on tonight I bake it off. He's got a lot of work to do here. He's going to be tired. Right, so I've got Ian here with me. And Ian, what are you going to do? I'm going to paint the ketchup all over this, even though I don't like ketchup at all. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't like ketchup, but he's going to paint the ketchup on the meatloaf because meatloaf's got to have ketchup. And we're using the G. Hughes sugar-free ketchup. And it is one carb per tablespoon. And that's probably three tablespoons. So there's probably six tablespoons all together in there. So not a ton of carbohydrate, but, um, you know, what's meatloaf without ketchup? You gotta get some more on there, boy. What? I don't like ketchup. Uh, so I'm kind of hesitant. <laughs> well, don't be hesitant. Get it all around there. So he's going to paint that up, and then this is going to go into a 325 degree oven. Uh, I do it till I get to an internal temperature above 165, 175. That's when I'm safe with it and I think it's done. All right, and uh, so we're gonna paint this up, throw it in the oven, and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. That's my Picasso there. Pablo the ketchup Picasso. I love it. <laughs> All right, you got it spread, get some more on there, boy. I love it. All right, I'm gonna let him paint and then uh, we'll get back with you. All right, the meatloaf looks good, and I'm going to go ahead and make the gravy. Now, I have one can of beef broth in there. I didn't add any salt to it because it's salty enough, this beef broth. And I've got one quarter teaspoon of glucoman. Okay, it says use a half a teaspoon in eight ounces. So this is 16 ounces. We're going to use a quarter teaspoon and it's less than a carb and it's all fiber so I'm gonna just sprinkle this over because this stuff will gel up and if you put it all in as one big clump and just dump it in then it's just gonna be a clump so I'm gonna just gonna sprinkle this over and uh, not boiling yet but we're letting it heat up. I'm going to take a little whisk here and I'm just going to work it around a little bit and we'll see what a quarter teaspoon does and watch the magic happen. I am going to add some uh, freshly crushed black pepper. Oh, you know, pepper and beef gravy. And we'll see here if this thickens which I'm sure it will thicken nicely here as it comes up to a boil. And the other thing I've got is some uh, grass milk half and half that I'm going to add once this is just a touch thicker. can always add a little bit more. Please forgive my dirty stove top. <laughs> I've been cooking all day. Uh, but you can always add a little bit more, but you can't take it out. And the one thing I don't want to do is turn this into jello. So I'd rather just start with a little bit less and then slowly let it thicken than start with a whole bunch too much and have a solid block on my hands because this stuff will absolutely gel like nobody's business.
So I'm going to go ahead and add in a little bit of a half and half. No, I didn't measure it, but yeah, probably a tablespoon or two. And that gives it a nice, you know, beefy, creamy consistency with really not much effort. And you could almost call that gravy there. I'm going to let this cook for just a minute or two to thicken a little bit more and then we'll show you the final thing once it's all plated up. But that's the process. I'm basically going to let this cook down for a couple of minutes and then uh, I'm actually going to turn the heat down and this is just going to continue to thicken over the next couple of minutes. Actually I'm going to turn the heat off and it's going to thicken off the heat and uh, that's it. Simplest gravy on the planet. And that is fantastic and really probably about three carbs and two grams of fiber so one net carb and that's if you ate all the gravy we're just gonna have a little so there we have our finished uh, meatloaf and gravy so I'm gonna go ahead and take some of this gravy here it does thicken a little bit as it sits not super thick gravy but it's gonna be good enough for this and look at that. Now you can always make it thicker by adding more of the glucoman in, but I think this is plenty fine. I think that that's doing the trick nicely. So there you have it. Pulled pork and beef meatloaf with beef gravy. I hope you all have a wonderful night. God bless all of you. We'll catch you in the next video. That looks amazing. And I am going to yum that up. Alright, we'll catch you in the next video. Have a great evening. Love every minute. Live it while you're in it.